In uh, the summer of 1970, I was asked to give a lecture in the embryology course by my good friend Jay Lash, with whom I'd been a postdoc in Cambridge. And I've been coming every summer since. Well, I began as an investigator in Lilly, working on uh, sea urchin egg fertilization and lysosomes in sea urchin eggs and cortical granules. I then was asked to become an instructor in the physiology course, which I did during a good part of the 70s. I then again became, I became an investigator, and I've been an investigator uh, from the 70s until uh, about 2000. And since then, I've had an uh, office in the library uh, because I've been editing a journal. When I, when I first heard about the MBL, I was a postdoctoral fellow in Severo Ochoa's laboratory at NYU. He's a no Nobel laureate, and the other Nobel laureate we had at NYU was Otto Levy. They spent the uh, summers here at various times. And above all, my chief of medicine was a man named Lewis Thomas, whose books are not exactly unknown, and who wrote Lives of a Cell here. So Lou went here, and uh, Lou said, uh, you may want to come to Woods Hole. It's a great place to work, a good, got a great library, and you'll meet everybody in science. And besides, you're working at Bellevue Hospital. It's a clinical setting. Let's spend some time with basic scientists. And I have since 1970. I'd say a good half of my close personal friends and my family's personal friends uh, have uh, been developed in the summers here at Woods Hole. It's number one. Scientifically, I've learned all sorts of things I'd never dream about. From my friend Lasso Lorand, I learned about transglutaminase, the enzyme that clots blood and within cells regulates how certain proteins are hooked together. From my other friend, Walter Troll, I learned about sea urchin egg fertilization and how membranes fuse. Um, from Bob Goldman, I learned about laminin and the intermediate filaments. Uh, from Gene Kennedy, I learned about lipid chemistry. I've learned a lot about various aspects of my publications, or my future publications, from people, from conversation, discussion, and criticism. Oh yeah, I've, uh, I've had uh, several of my students uh, who've been here in the summer are now full professors at institutions like Harvard, NYU, Case Western Reserve, UCSF, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, almost every medical student or um, PhD candidate who's been with me here at Woods Hole in the laboratory is now a full-time faculty one, at one step of the academic ladder or other. It's a great place to get young people enthused about science. As I said before, it's a place where people fall in love with each other and with science. In fact, one of my when I was teaching in physiology, one of my assistants, and I won't give, mention his name, fell in love with uh, uh, Tom Pollard's uh, assistant, and the two of them made beautiful music in the laboratory and got married. And the other thing I remember from you know, Lewis Thomas, uh, the first hard summer I came here, uh, Fred Bang was working out the way that lumulus amoebocytes come together when you put endotoxin in. That became the f foundation of a company, you know. How do we test for endotoxin? That's a Woods Hole discovery. Well, Lou was the one who tried to do the biology because Lou also worked on white cells and how they aggregate. And he said, look, you got to look at limulus. When I was looking at the white cells, look at the limulus. They, they've got great amoebocytes. I said, well, not really white cells. Well, look at them. So he came up to the, uh, I was in this building on the third floor with um, Walter Troll uh, working on sea urchins. He said, I got to show you, I got to show you a limulus. So Lou Thomas brought me this big, large limulus cracked it like this, showed me how to, and I got a 20, 20 milli, you had to collect it uh, under, under uh, nit uh, nitrogen or, um, uh, or uh, 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 hydrogen sulfide, which smelled, but anyway, you collected it so they wouldn't oxidize, and so it stayed blue instead of turning brown, because the hemolymph is blue. And uh, uh, sure enough, we watched it uh, eat, you're right, the crystals. But it, didn't, it was tough to watch but because of the fluid. Uh, it's, it, ain't, it was much easier to work with elasmobrac ringers than with limulus. I think to me the most exciting, the one of the most exciting aspects of uh, um, Woods Hole are the Friday evening lectures when the whole community gets together to either uh, applaud or dismiss the lecture. I've given about three of them, and I've introduced, I think, a record number. And that experience of being in Lily 
with a distinguished audience and confronting them is daunting for the speaker. On the other hand, if you're in the audience, it is also remarkable. Look around you and you see what it is. Moreover, in that same, I think, in that same auditorium, one hears music and the concerts, lectures, and the, um, uh, the uh, liberal arts aspect of what has taken place here is also exciting. So uh, uh, to me, the, the memorable part, labs can happen anywhere, the sea can happen anywhere, but the sea, the lab, and Lily, that auditorium where people come together to celebrate its uh, magic. For those of us who are uh, complete agnostics, it's the closest thing to religious uh, congregational experience I've had. Well, it used to be that uh, the, uh, the tennis courts used to be much more um, crowded uh, by full-time scientists who were here. Now that scientists got come in and out for shorter bursts of time, that is not, uh, people now play at Memorial or elsewhere, but that used to be a, a sort of center. It was called, you belonged to something called the MBL Tennis Club, and you paid dues, which paid for the maintenance of it, and I was one of the first presidents of the MBL Tennis Club. So dues were collected, you had sign-ups and so on. And in fact, I still have the old scoreboard that was given to me and I have it hanging in uh, my computer room uh, at home. But um, it, again, it was, it was for the same way the coffee in the, uh, in the uh, copy room was a gathering uh, place. At the moment, there is no agora. You know, the agora is the meeting place or forum for some people to talk to each other. As we've become more um, screen-oriented and less agoral, we may become more agonist. But, but the point is that uh, there was one of the agor, uh, like Stony itself, and the different parts of Stony, some one group sat on this side, another group sat over here, and it was a very social group, distinct, uh, and the courts were just another one. Very much, by the way, they, believe it or not, uh, the, there used to be poker tournaments held by the held by the uh, by the marine biological laboratory and i still have framed uh, uh, a, a certificate given to me by te hayashi teru hayashi uh, the great physiologist from columbia uh, saying that i was the best poker player in i think 18, 19, 1989 but i mean that was again that kind of more camp-like atmosphere Again, people made fun of this being a summer camp. There's an article in Science Magazine about this being a summer camp. But if you'll, uh, people who spend some of their youth at summer camp know how formative an experience that is, especially for the young. Um, first uh, uh, experiments I was interested in, in uh, uh, sea urchin uh, fertilization because cortical granule discharge is what happens when lysosomes fuse with the phagosome when a particle goes into a phagocytic cell. And I thought the mechanism might be similar and we studied the morphology of that. I then went on to give uh, um, dogfish gout. Uh, humans get gout when crystals of monosodium urate are taken up inside little phagocytic vacuoles and the crystal forms hydrogen bonds with the phospholipid bilayer on the inside after the protein has been digested by lysosomal enzymes and, and the um, lysosome goes like this inside the cell and the cell commits suicide. It's not apoptosis, it's lysosomal death. I studied that both in human white cells but it's hard to see granules of human white cells by light microscopy. It certainly was in those days. But dogfish phagocytes have huge lysosomes that stain with uh, vital dyes. And you could see that process. And in fact, it was the first uh, lecture, I, uh, Friday night lecture I ever gave here. It was called Mechnikov Revisited. And I talked about dogfish getting, uh, getting the gout. I then went on to uh, use other uh, 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 models. Uh, a man who first worked at the fisheries then moved to the MBL in 1890, and uh, I'm sorry, that was in, uh, after the uh, Russian Revolution um, in the teens, in 19, uh, was uh, Paul Galtsov. And he was a man who said that the aggregation of marine sponges resembles the aggregation of human white cells. Wow, well I've been studying human white cells forever. You know, that's what I do for a living in, in New York. And uh, um, Max Berger, 
who was a Swiss biologist, uh, right above me and, and Lily, had been studying how marine sponges get together through a, a protein. I said, gee, there must be some relationship. But what they did was to watch clumps in a dish. I said, that ain't quantitative, I need numbers. So I used the technique we used for neutrophil aggregation, which is light, uh, uh, light scattering, nephilography, which is physical, and we managed to discover, together with Phil Dunham, who is a co-worker of mine, who worked with me for many years, um, and Leslie Vassal, who is be speaking here Thursday, um, working out how uh, marine sponges recognize each other, the calcium dependence of that, the dependence on lipid mediators, and then we extended that to human cells. Moreover, uh, we then did the lipid analysis of what the lipids are in marine organism. Together with Mosley Waite and Charles Serhan, uh, we discovered that docosa hexanoic acid, DHA, is a very important uh, lipid present in marine sponges and other uh, marine organisms, and that later was found to be anti-inflammatory by mechanisms that constitute the cover of the July issue of the FASIB journal. Uh, the Liposome Company was um, uh, founded by myself and, uh, and um, Jack Whitehead um, in the uh, late um, in the late, uh, uh, I think it must have been '87 or so, and um, yeah, and um, it was based on stuff both that we did in Cambridge, but at NYU, and some of the work I'd done here, namely putting enzymes inside. And uh, in fact, we, the original project was to mimic some of the experiments I had done here, which is to put an antiviral drug in here and then deliver it into the lung via aerosols. Now there are th developments that are very much like it. Um, when we, Alec Mangum and I discovered liposomes in Cambridge in '65, um, uh, we were the first reference, and there are now uh, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, thousands in, in uh, references in PubMed to liposomes. Two major drugs that the company developed are in clinical use and going to people's veins. Well, I, I remember Hurricane Bob uh, when uh, Vineyard Sound, Eel Pond, and Buzzards Bay um, came together in our pond. And uh, the end result was we, uh, uh, we got in the car fast and, uh, and, ex and escaped to the Copley Plaza in Boston watching, uh, watching, uh, uh, watching local television in our room, afraid what was going to happen to the house. We came back and it was pretty devastated. But the first thing we noticed was silence. You know why? The frogs had croaked, literally croaked. 